In two previous videos, we discussed the importance and the definitions of algorithmic discrimination with Dr. Elisa Selis, a research scientist at EPFL. Today, we are going to discuss the challenges that will need to be solved to remove algorithmic discrimination once and for all. Once you have a fairness definition, it basically becomes a constrained optimization problem. So before you were just trying to optimize your click-through rate, uh, now you want to optimize the click-through rate subject to being fair, whatever your fairness means. Um, so the way we have it set up in this general framework is that we can translate your definition of fairness into some very nice, simple convex constraints in the optimization problem. So what this allows us to do uh, often is even use some very nice, well-developed techniques out of uh, convex optimization or online convex optimization. Again, it depends a little bit on the problem, uh, but often just kind of rephrasing this way, there's already a lot of uh, very nice technology that we can use. So not only do we need software solutions, but we even need efficient software solutions. Some of the main technical challenges, uh, for example, on these online applications is that uh, we need things to be very fast, right? Because you're loading a web page, it has to be there like that. So that is one of the main challenges. Often. There is an algorithm that can solve the problem, but it is not uh, at the level that it can do web scale type of applications fast enough. Mm. Uh, so that is where we have gone in to develop uh, faster algorithms, uh, sometimes approximation algorithms, but things that really you can run, uh, run at web scale. So we need fast algorithms, even if these are not optimal. What are the other challenges? So I think a lot of the challenges, uh, again, are in some of these definitions, right? So uh, getting, again, establishing what the right definition is in a given context, even what is the right group in a given context, right? So when I'm balancing the news, what should I balance across? Should it be Republican and Democrat? Is there a notion of independent news? And how do I even classify news? Right? So I think some of the main challenges are not just technical, but in this broader space of how, how does this connect to, uh, to what we should be doing? How do we quantify fairness? How do we quantify the groups that we should be fair across? And I think one of the main interesting challenges is how can we do this in an automatic fashion? because it will be very difficult to, every time there's some new group that is being discriminated, going in and kind of adding new constraints. So is there uh, something that we can do where our algorithm is actively detecting potential biases and correcting for them? Now, even if we had all of these algorithmic solutions in our toolbox, there would probably still be many more less technical challenges, starting with raising awareness of both problems and solutions. Yeah, that's a great point. I think it's very important to be communicating uh, with the public and then also with the NGOs or government agencies uh, that really need to uh, grapple with, with these concepts. So one of the things I've been doing uh, along with my colleagues here is trying to come up with uh, small demos that illustrate how some of these things could work. Uh, so uh, right now, for example, we have uh, a couple of demos up. One is showing what uh, uh, what a fair news algorithm would look like. So we show you what your kind of current Google News would be versus a balanced Google News that is showing you things across multiple sides of the political spectrum. And another uh, problem where we see a lot of bias is in image search online, where if you look for certain occupations, occupations that are generally considered to be male-dominated have a lot of male images appear and female dominated have a lot of female images appear and more so than what is there in reality. So for example, if you search for CEO on Google images, uh, you see something around 10, 11% women, when in reality, it's something like 27% women. So this is another example of where the bias can be exacerbated. And again, we have a demo where we show what a balanced one could look like, and not just what it would look like, but we have a little slider where you can decide what is balanced for you, right? What do you think is fair? Mm -hmm. And you can choose it, and then we, we show you what those results look like. So we're working uh, like this on a variety of problems to not just come up with the right algorithms, but also uh, come up with small demos that can show the public um, 
what this would look like or, or what the options really are. But what about companies? After all, they are the ones that can implement such solutions. Uh, so companies are more and more interested. I think there's more and more public pressure for them to be interested. Is I think that's part of why getting the public involved and understanding that, yes, there are solutions uh, is very important. I think for a long time, companies had I would just say, oh, yes, that sounds great, but we don't know how to do it, right? So our goal is really to make sure they don't have that excuse, <laughs> right? Uh, so uh, there is more interest. I have yet to see uh, many companies implement any such solutions, but I'm hopeful that this is, this is changing, uh, that they're putting more effort and more thought uh, into what their algorithms are really doing. Now, if you're not a geek, all of these algorithmic solutions can be a bit overwhelming. After all, we're using algorithms to solve algorithmic problems. Can't we get rid of it all? I guess uh, whether we like it or not, we are surrounded by all these algorithms, right? It's not, in a sense, not possible to get away from them unless you don't want to use your phone and don't want to use your computer and uh, don't want an algorithm choosing and finding an efficient bus schedule, right? I mean, algorithms have done really great things for society, actually, right? I mean, it allows us to be connected all across the globe. It allows for a lot of efficiencies uh, in our economies and planning. So I don't think algorithms should be thought of as something bad. They should be thought of as something that we do have to be careful of, uh, especially as and when they are affect I mean, we are interacting with them, right? They are controlling our lives in some sense. So we just have to make sure that we put in that extra thought and think this through. What aspects of these algorithms are learning, um, are optimizing something that's good, and where can these human biases that we would like to eliminate as a society, where can they potentially be creeping in? So I don't think it's a matter of getting rid of algorithms. I think it's a matter of making sure that the algorithms we use are fair. And what our work here is showing is that it's not impossible to be fair. I mean, the, there's definitely solutions. So uh, let's just kind of together work towards making sure those are the algorithms that are being used. So overall, where are we with blockchains? So I think we're at the beginning of a very exciting journey. and. Uh, and it's, we're just in the early days. Basically what this algorithm, these algorithms have done is learn about the human biases and then are just replicating them. So just because it's a computer doesn't mean it's impartial, right? The computer is still learning from the real world and the real world is biased.